everyone good morning guys very important talk today talk of the day is branding in this video i will share quite a few stories uh, and um, i will help you guys to come up with a new name if you hate your name if you absolutely don't understand what you're in business for and uh, yesterday i've been in three different threads and it's this time of the year end of the year december Maybe you started a business and you just did not um, brainstorm in the beginning. Uh, I've seen a lot of people rebranding right now. Yesterday, uh, if you follow our groups, we have several threads with a whole bunch of comments. And this is the area where we can disagree. And I will talk about uh, who should you ask for opinion about name, slogan, logo, all of that. I'm, I'm gonna cover all of this. I'm gonna give you really good tips. I'm gonna share some really good books. I will share the story, hold on. I will share the story with you of how I was coming up with my brands, the story behind Roofing Insights, Directory, Storm Group, Ice Dam Liquidators, every brand I ever owed. And um, let's start right away, guys. How important is the name? I wanna clear the waters right away. Branding is not your logo. It's not what you put in your hat. I mean, I have hats. I love my names. I I love my logos, but that's not branding. I would say first thing today, first statement, branding has to do everything with the customer service. And let me explain. You can have the best name in the world. You start your business. Let's say it's a Spavia massage place. You go there for the first massage and the person behind the counter is rude to you. What does it do to your brand? You just ruined your brand. And uh, how important is the name? How important is the brand? People uh, often talk about Nike, Apple, and Amazon. I mean, here's what Jeff Bezos says. Jeff Bezos says, I think it goes like this. Branding is what you, what people say about you uh, when you're not in the room. That's true branding. Now, uh, I'm gonna explain to you what your name will do and you would, uh, what uh, your name will not do for you. This book right here. Uh, Ellen Laura uh, Rice, War in the Boardroom. Highly recommend. Number one book in my library. If you have any branding question, questions, uh, rebrand, rename. This, guys, it's a very old book. This too, uh, L and Laura. L is very old gentleman. Laura is his daughter. They work with companies like Ford, Nike, Pepsi, tons of examples. You will see, oh, I have it upside down. Absolutely amazing book. You will understand. Uh, marketing way better if you read this. Uh, they give you tons of samples. I'll, I'll give you just a couple examples. Let, let me find a couple pictures. Uh, they analyze uh, car industry a lot. I love car industry. They talk about a whole bunch of branding positions in, in the morning. If you're in the position right now to even think about new name, read this book first. Here's my first advice. Before you go online and before you ask people for a recommendation about your name. You are the one. I want you to think about yourself as a Bill Gates, Steve Jobs 30 years ago. You're about to change the world. You're probably about to change your family tree, your kids, your, your next couple generations. What you're doing today, the decisions you're making today will affect your kids and your grandkids. Tell me how it's not important to have a good name for it. Do you try to build a legacy or are you just trying to build yourself another job? So if you're trying to build a legacy and build something, I highly, highly recommend take your name seriously. Here's what your name uh, will not do for you though. If, if you don't work hard, if you don't hustle, if you don't practice, like I, I see a lot of guys with the great names, but they suck in business because they didn't do nothing else. I mean, name is just the beginning. Uh, I would argue guys like Steve Jobs, uh, you know, Elon Musk, they have a good names, you know, Tesla, very thought for, for like, I mean, Nike, who knows what Nike means? It's a goddess of victory in Greek's mythology. So Nike actually a victorious name. It's a great name. I mean, but even with that name, Nike could fail and you will fail if you, so name in the beginning will save you thousands, if not hundreds of thousand dollars on marketing. For example, if you have a bad name, uh, the best way I can explain you is this. If you have a bad name, it's the same thing as to try to get a six pack and tr to get some muscles on a bad diet. You cannot out train a bad diet. 
Can you? Yes. If you want to run 10 miles a day after you eat ice cream and pizza, be my guest. I hate running. I don't want to run 10 miles just because I cannot figure out what uh, my diet should be. So you cannot out train good diet. The same thing with the brand names. When you have a sock name, if you are like J and R exteriors, right? Nobody will remember it. This book will teach you everything you need to know. Your name should be memorable. It should be catchy. Uh, if people can memorize and remember your name after they've seen it one or two times, and I think a lot of our brands that I came up with, you know, including director, people will remember it. It's a little bit different. It's, uh, but if people cannot remember your name, it will just cost you way too much work to promote it. People argue with me yesterday and I want to address it. We were talking about should you have exteriors in your name or should you have just roofing? Up to you. There is a lot of success stories out there. You know, if you're in business for 20 years and you have just exteriors, you're already number one leader. Yeah, you probably, okay, you don't need to rebrand. But here's the thing. If you do it today, 2020, 2021 rules are different. Mar uh, markets are is saturated. If you have a bad name, you'll just have to work harder. I like shortcuts in life. So uh, with a bad name, you'll work way harder, just like on a bad diet, you will work way harder. You still can get fit. That's uh, point number one. Uh, another point I want to say, the process. Uh, at roofing school, any of you guys who know me, I mean, we, I think we came up with like 50 names, 50 slogans, so we will help you. But here's the thing. I am not in naming business, right? Uh, this is not my service. I will help you. I will be your guide, but I will tell you, read this book first. Nobody knows your story and your name uh, better than yourself. So. Uh, don't go on the Facebook and say, people, come up with a name for me. You have to know what's your story, where are you going, what's authentic to you. And what I would do and what I did with all of my brands, then throw it out there and create a brainstorm among your friends. You know, it's okay to hire a professional to give you advice ideas. I'll give you a story right now. This name right here, directory.com. I hate it, every single logo. I have professional graphic designer here and I have two more that could help me. I hate it. This logo, I love. I can put it in downtown uh, building in Minneapolis right now or anywhere in the world because I love it. You have to love your brand. I love Roofing Insights. You know how we came up with the Roofing Insights? One of my videographers came up with it, you know, years ago. This brand's been in business only for three years and it means something. But your brand is your personality behind the brand. Like for example, a Roofing Process Conference. We came up with a brand new name, a Roofing Process Conference, because we wanted to have our conference. Imagine this, it's only one year old and it's already means something. But without our personality, it could be a shitty conference that nobody wants. We have 500 people attended this year. We have not received one single complaint and this brand means something already. So brand is not just a name, it's what you put into it. It's all the work, it's all the grind. But if I wouldn't have good name for conference, I would say people would not remember it. As a matter of fact, I had one brand. The only one time in my life I absolutely sucked. I regret it because I sucked and I admit it. Before roofing school, I tried something. For those of you uh, who followed me for a couple of years, you probably remember. Do you remember company DIY Ethrix? Horrible name. Great example how bad name will absolutely crush you. And I worked tirelessly back then on it, just like I do with the roofing school today, but I just could not take it off the ground. People were confused. People are asking me questions. What DIY ethic is? The concept was simple. DIY, do it yourself ethics, do it yourself ads. I wanted to teach people how to be your own marketer, how to not to hire a marketer, how to do your own ads. People did not understand it. They could not connect the dots between Roofing Insights and DIY Adfrix. Today, everything we do is connected. People understand Roofing Insights. People understand uh, Roofing School. And Storm Group is one of my first birth. As a matter of fact, I read this book uh, when I was working on the Storm Group roofing name. And I came up with it uh, two weeks after I read this book. Uh, I wanted to dominate this year. So I already studied the market and I've never chase storms. I've never worked with one insurance claims, did not know anything. 
about insurance industry. But when I was doing my research and I knew I'm gonna open a roofing business in Minnesota, I during my research, I noticed that every single company, big company, big players, like 40, 50 million dollar company, they have articles and blogs on their website about storm restoration and storm damage. I'm like, why? Why every roofing company trying to uh, position them on the market as a storm uh, restoration expert? What is it about? And then I did a little bit more research. I'm like, oh, there's something about the storm damage because insurance companies are... I did not know nothing about the industry, but I realized that that's what everybody is going. Uh, and I am decided to have a storm in my name. Second thing, I needed something else. Like I have to connect storm and roofing and I'm not a copycat. I'm not gonna go and steal a name or something. So I really, really was thinking through and I'm a one guy show, right? I didn't have employees, I didn't have a partners, I didn't have anyone behind be, be, besides me. So I'm like, I need something to make me look bigger. That's where a group came uh, from. Storm group, it just sounds big. It sounds like an organization. The very first year in business, people were telling me that, uh, is uh, asking me questions, is it a franchise? How many employees do you have? I have one customer in the first year in business told me I did not want to hire at first because I did not want to work with a big company. I wanted to work with a small company. I'm like, dude, I have like one employee. So that's what name does to you. Storm group just sounded bigger than it was. And it helped me tremendously. I did almost million dollars in the industry that I did not know nothing about in 2013. And then I added the roofing. So I dominated two searches. I dominated storm damage. If homeowner would type in storm damage contractor or storm restoration or storm damage, um, you know, repair, I would come up and search. And I dominated roofing. When people uh, type in roofing company, storm group roofing would come up, boom. Immediately, I would come up with that. So guys, don't take your name lightly. I mean, that's that's your legacy. And today I'm selling my business to my general manager and I love it. Like I love what we become. Like Storm Group uh, ended up being way over a thousand reviews online. We killed it on many, many platforms. We made millions of dollars. Company runs by itself. And I'm teaching you guys how to get there. But how do you change the name? Well, a couple of things here. You can ask people online and it's a good practice. I actually recommend it. What I recommend is uh, don't listen to yourself. So many people want to just be, uh, you, you guys just want to be about you. When you come up with a name, shut the freaking up. Don't even think about what you think. Ask people around you. Marketing is all about perception. I'll give you an example. Uh, I like sharing the story <laughs> because it's a funny one. I have a company called Ice Dam Liquidators. We're absolutely dominate in the winter time when we have ice dams, people just call us like crazy. Great name, I love it. But same thing, four years ago I was coming up with a name and uh, end game was Ice Dam Liquidator. So I needed Ice Dam Company so it's not uh, just extension of my roofing company. And during the brainstorm process, I ask, like I always do, all my guys around me for opinions, I would come up with a name. One of the names I came come up with, and I was running by my friends, was uh, Ice Dam, no, Siberian Steamer. Because I'm from Siberia, I'm like, that's authentic, people will understand. So Siberian Steamer was original name for my uh, Ice Dam business. And I remember when people just did not like it, and I remember when uh, my web guy at the time called me as like Dmitry don't go with Siberian steamer it sounds like a porn name it sounds dirty and I would not even think about it uh, Volkswagen uh, named uh, one of their cars Touareg and uh, they offended some Africans um, uh, tribes because it was bad meaning there when you come up with a name you don't think about yourself you don't think about what you think and how it sounds to you you go and you ask everybody around you, what do you guys think? Like, that's one of the problems with the malarkey. I love mal malarkey shingles, but perception is not there. You have to work a little bit harder if you install malarkey shingles and you, if you run malarkey brand, malarkey knows it because people don't take you seriously at first and then you build a brand. Malarkey is a great example uh, that you can make it to the top even with a bad name, but you just have to work way harder. 
I would rather run with a better name to begin with, something super catchy, super cool. But here's the thing. Uh, online algorithm smarter than uh, that now. It's like old phone book names like AA Roofing. Um, uh, here's, uh, I'll answer Nate to this. Your name, it's very show, short real estate. You only have two, three words. The shorter, the better. Here's what I would recommend. Always have your number one service in, in your name. It can be DBA, it can be whatever. But when you have a service, like, what are you gonna be known for? You, you're gonna, in life, guys, you're gonna be um, known for one thing, one thing only. Um, not two, not three. You can have a buy, what you've done. Like Elon Musk today, he, he associated with a Tesla. He built PayPal, that's a story. I, I'm not a floor guy anymore. 10 years ago, I was all about floors. I was a flooring guy. And I wanted all my network, everybody around me to know me as a floor guy. When I started roofing business, some people went crazy. Like my father-in-law laughed at me. He's like, dude, what are you doing? You're a flooring guy. You sold, you sold flooring business, started a flooring business. I'm like, I don't want to be in flooring business. I'm done with it. That's a past. So Elon Musk started, sold PayPal. It's a past. I'm pretty sure Tesla will come to the end one day. You cannot be all service to all people. So mistakes that people do now, they do exteriors. Do you do roofing, siding, gutters? You know how many times uh, I have this problem? In my roofing business, I have storm roof roofing because I wanted to be known for roofing. I want to be number one roofing company. I want all my friends to know about me. I want to be get all the referrals for roofing. But all my trailers, all my yard signs, all my business cars have roofing and siding, all of them. I have dumb trailers and they have roofing and siding. You know how many times I would finish a job because I wanted siding mainly because it's Minnesota. I was a siding installer in 2006, so I know all about siding. I can sell it, it complements the house, right? You know how many times I would finish the job, a roofing job, I would come to the homeowner during the final walk and I would tell the homeowner this, looks like you need new siding. And homeowner look me in the eye and say, oh, I did not know you do that. And I'm like, do you see that trailer right there? Do you see a huge ladder siding? Do you see the yard side? And he goes, oh, I guess you do do siding. Here's the thing, perception is a crazy thing. When you know for something, that's what you know for. I would rather you to be, I, guys, if you follow this channel, Roofing Insights, especially on YouTube, you've seen the interviews. You can be a gutter guy and make millions. You can have, uh, like Linda's Construction, they have Leaf Guard franchise. They, they make millions of dollars in sales just a Leaf Guard. Uh, Leaf Filter just does Leaf Filter. One single, they're not trying to do all gutter cover. One product and they're like $100 million company. Majority of you listening to this video will never get to that level. You will never get, majority of you will never get uh, past $5 million. But you be with me, about exteriors in your name. Smaller is bigger, less is more. The less services you do, the more services. And by the way, this book is brilliant about it. Alan Laura Reese war in the boardroom because in the boardroom, there's always a war. Here's the war. Marketing always want to have narrow path. They always want to do less and they want to position themselves on the market for something and to be known for something. For Nike, it's a shoe, right? But management always wants more. No, let's do more. Let's do more services. Let's upgrade. Let's upsell. I'm telling you right now, companies like Honda, they, they produce less cars, but all of their cars are perfect. Honda is better than Toyota. And here's why. Toyota is the biggest manufacturer in the world. But their reliability rating is like 83%. Honda and Subaru is like 99%. I would rather you have four cars in your line and have 100% success rate with them than have 12 and have a whole bunch of issues. You will have less headaches. You will scale it more. And I'm just telling you, it's worth to do less. Now, let's talk about how do you come up with a name? Here's what I recommend. There's a couple services. 99 designs is one of them. If you call me and say, Dimitri, I need a new name. Uh, I will recommend you third parties to come up with a name. We actually have, we changed a lot of names and there's a lot of brand new companies in the roofing school and we changed a lot of them. But it was not me brainstorming because 
I will I would rather work with agency who just specializes in the name. It's too important to give it to your friend. Can I come up with your name? Yes, I can. But listen, even with a directory, I couldn't come up with a, my own uh, logo. Here's why. This is billion dollar company right here. This is too important. I wasn't in love with it. When you come up with a name, with a hat, yeah, it's not important. You have to work on it. Like you have to, your personality will, will make this brand. Your brand is nothing without your personality. Here's the thing though. If you have a bad name, if you're not in love with it, if you cannot put it in downtown building, if it's confusing, if your employees come to you and asking questions, what is it that you do? Or oh, I'm not reading it from here. It has to be descriptive. It has to be on point. It has to be like, people want to be proud of wearing your logo. They cannot be like, oh, I did not know you do that. Or I'm not in love with it. Or I think we can know. You want to have a name like Nike Swoosh that people want to put shirt on. Like, you know how many times people ask us for their hats? If you want this hat, come and I'll send you one. People ask for these hats now. And it's not because we're cooler. I mean, we, we know branding. The thing is this, this cost me $1,300. 99 designs, you can get a logo for $300. You, have, you deal with the five designers. You still own the process. We have 300 submissions before we have this one. Everything we, we were coming up, we just hated it. Right now, we're trying to come up with a new uh, truck, um, uh, how do you call it, a decal. So you guys can, if you're a member of directory, you can put it in your trucks. And we just struggle with it because it's hard to come up with something that you put like a sticker, right? And it looks good. You know, think about BBB, um, like a certified back in the day. Those logos, they look cool from branding perspective. We want this to be look cool as well, but it's not easy. And we, we have so many designs that I absolutely hate it. I hate the direction. We have round one, long one. I needed to have a box so I can remove director and put my quote on. I always do my brand so I can extort like portion of it. Think about Nike swoosh, you take it out. Like for me, this green box, I can take it out, put a quote in, put in. Like um, publish online, branding never stops you never stop working on your branding. So you have to brainstorm. What I would recommend, uh, like for example, my friend Liz, Elizabeth Skitty, a lot of you guys work with her, I love Liz. And we don't agree with her on some branding guy, and it's totally fi uh, fine. Let me explain to you disagreements on branding. Recently, I watched very long interview with a top uh, uh, movie critic, like one of the top, like top 10 guys in the world. So he writes articles for, you know, like let, think about movie um, that nominated by uh, for Oscar. So he would uh, write review on the movies, right? Everybody knows him. He speaks Russian, French, English. Very famous guy, movie critic. And I watched two hour interview with him three days ago. Here's what he said. He said, if you don't like my review on the movie, don't take it personally. This is just my opinion. So if I don't like your, your name, your logo, your brand, who am I? Take it for what it's worth. Uh, for example, if, if I criticize movie Avatar, but the Avatar movie changed your life, that's your experience with the Avatar movie. I look at things a little bit different. And on the branding, there's a lot of um, areas in life, like for example, if you grandfather it in, in a certain name, maybe like, uh, like, in, in this book too, L. Laura Reese, they will tell, uh, talk about it. Don't change it. If it's been around for years, it's already grandfathered in. People remember it for something. And uh, sometimes it's okay to make a mistake or even be in your face kind of thing. If you know the rule, you can break the rule. So right now, you know, when we have these conversations online and I don't agree with you or I don't agree with Liz, it's not like there's nothing personal about it. It's, uh, it's very subjective. It's my opinion versus her opinion. Uh, I recommend, like, I know I'm, I suck. I know I've made branding mistakes. I think all of us do. I don't want to be responsible for it. I want, my point is this, you can use anyone in the world. You can use Liz and please use Liz. She's the best in business. I love 401 and her group and she's my partner. She's like my sister. I love her. And uh, you can use my team if you want, but it's your job and you're responsible 
for your ad. You're responsible for your name, for your logo, for your slang. Your personality is your brand more than anything. Steve Jobs' personality more brand than Apple. Tesla is as powerful as Elon Musk. And if Elon Musk stopped developing today, stop producing cars today, stop developing their product, it's gonna go down. No matter, you're never too big to fail. No matter what's in your hat, it's your personality, it's your customer service. We are just a small service. Just take our opinion for what it's worth and listen to your gut. You are building your legacy. Your name will be what, you, what the meaning you put into. You are Steve Jobs. You are Bill Gates. You're changing your family tree. You have your story to write. You know, when I come up with a directory, when I come up with the roofing insights, when I come up with the roofing process conference, I will ask everybody around me, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about it? At the end of the day, I make my decision what I'm gonna be run with. Some of you might not like directory. Some of you might not like roofing insights, but I tell you this, all my logos are on point. They're descriptive, they're catchy, they're memorable. They represent who I am. And when I put logo on my head, I'm ready to run with it for life. This is my logo for the next 10 years. If you need help with a logo, with the branding, uh, first of all, educate yourself. Read this book. Second of all, find someone you can trust. Third of all, don't uh, make decisions by yourself. Listen to everyone around you. Your brand is not what you think about yourself. It's what people think about yourself. And more importantly, your brand and your company online is not what you think it is online. It's what Google thinks it, it is online. So if, you, if Google is not ranking you, if you wanna work harder, if you don't wanna invest two weeks coming up with a new name, you just work harder later, it's fine, you can do it. If you have personality and grind, you probably will still make it to the top with any name. I mean, you can name your company, your roofing company, plumbing company, you know, spend the rest of your life explaining to people why your roofing company has a plumbing in the name. You can do it, who cares? It's your decision. But I like shortcuts in life. I don't like to work harder. I like to work smarter. If you come to me, I'll give you all the resources. As a matter of fact, here's what I recommend. I recommend find someone who knows what he's talking about if you don't have time and have him deal with those third-party agencies. Like our process at roofing school is very simple. We can give you our logo if you like it, run with it. If you don't like it, we'll hire someone to create a logo and we'll make them accountable for that logo. The same goes with the name. We have a company who just specializes in names and we'll, it, your name is specific to you. Sometimes it's part has part of your last name. Sometimes it's your service, whatever. Take it for what it's worth, guys. Don't, but whatever you do, don't neglect your name and don't let people say it's not important because it is. Hope it was helpful. Let me know what you think about this book. If you guys read it, if you are in a position to rebrand your company, this is the book where to start. Thank you guys. Love you all.